One thing that is becoming increasingly evident as we approach the coronation is how everyone in or attached to the royal family is looking to position themselves. The PR machine is in overdrive and there is no one way to frame the narrative, refine your profile or jostle for position. And our show tonight is basically centred around that very theme. Who are you? How do you want to be perceived? What's your proximity to the action? And who are you trying to endear yourself to? It's basically running a Melbourne Cup in the lead up to Coronation Day. The Sussexes, they're in the business of big, bold, brash statements aimed at titillating a US audience as they try and wrangle the best of both worlds. A carefree everyday independence and an active role on the royal scene when it suits them. Despite their desperate attempts to be liked, they are the least popular royals, save for Prince Andrew, which really says something. The Cambridges are the proverbial ducks on water, cool, calm and wholesome on top, yet busily working to refine and position themselves as the fresh generation monarchy. They haven't put a foot wrong since the Queen passed away and they've engaged even more enthusiastically in their royal duties. As the antithesis of the Sussexes, the British public and the media continue to dote on the grown-up version of Will and Kate. They will be the next king and queen after all, and no doubt the long-term investment in their image will be well worth it. Fergie has released a new saucy novel, and she will apparently talk about Meghan and Harry during her US book launch. She has risen like a phoenix from the ashes and back into the good books with the British public. And I trust this will be even more so if she lands a couple of blows on Prince Harry on the way through. Fergie's stocks have risen in inverse correlation to her former husband. Speaking of Andrew, he has been hiding in the broom cupboard of the servants' quarters out the back of St James Palace for the last 18 months, and yet he still finds himself a permanent but unhelpful fixture in the media. And, of course, there's the king and queen consort. Charles is getting on with core business and whether or not he's as popular as the late Queen, he is carrying out his duties as he was destined to do under the watchful eye of the British press. Queen Camilla is another royal who has been subject to an almost total reversal in public sentiment. At one time, she was less popular than Margaret Thatcher at a picket line and now she's broadly regarded as the woman who works steadfastly to hold it all together. Don't think that happened by accident. The posturing, the planning, the projecting will all continue right up until coronation when all eyes are on the royal family. And by then, everyone would have done their darndest to be perceived the way they want to be perceived for all the right people for the biggest event of a generation. It's been delicious watching it all from the sideline as it it plays out. 